then you need to understand that through the blood of Jesus Christ, you have been made righteous. I'm not trying to be righteous. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Welcome to A Father's Heart with Dr. Phil Godot. Dr. Brenda Godot. We are a family-friendly church that teaches the Word of God so you can live an effective Christ-centered life. This is where the Word works when you work the Word. And now, our A Father's Heart broadcast. Turn with me in your Bible today to the book of uh, Genesis, uh, the first chapter, but I'm going to just say something out of the second chapter first. Genesis, the second chapter. And we've been teaching a series of messages on singleness, on singleness, and uh, living in his power, singleness. One of the things that the enemy does and works really hard is against what we call, I call singles, but the world calls unmarried. And what we have done is tied unmarried as being single. But God calls singleness separate from being unmarried. So because of our lack of understanding, people have uh, uh, got, went into depressions and went into all kind of different anxiety attacks because of their uh, being unmarried because they never moved into singleness. So what I'm saying is that singleness is a state to be pursued not a state to be run from. Uh, being unmarried means that you are not single or nor have you increased your value. So uh, in the book of uh, Genesis, the second chapter, verse 18 says, and the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone, to be alone, and I will make him a help me. Um, in other words, it's not good for him to be isolated or by himself. But he was not saying it was not good for man not to be married. Marriage is not the ultimate goal for us as people. Amen. Marriage, I'm going to say it again, is not the ultimate goal. It might be your ultimate goal, but it is not God's ultimate goal for you to get married. God's ultimate goal for you is to be single, to come into the uniqueness. The word single means to be separate, unique, and whole. God's goal is for you to become single, not married. God is not against you getting married, but God wants you to become, if you're going to get married, he does not want you marrying an unmarried person. And he nor does he want you to be unmarried. Because the worst thing that could ever happen to two people is two unmarried people to get married. That just went right over your head. I can see Facebook right now. <laughs> Pastor Godot don't believe in marriage or he's saying this and that. Listen to me. The worst thing that could ever happen is two unmarried people to get married. Because marriage is not made for unmarried people. Marriage is made for single people. And marriage will never be fulfilled or you will never experience the joy and the power of marriage until you become single. And a lot of times, singleness means to be separate, unique, and whole, to be complete, to be fulfilled in him. That's when your life is going to take a whole different turn. The reason why we see so much divorce, unhappy people in marriages, is because we had unmarried people get married. Not single people get married. Because when you become single, see, you don't need somebody else to make you happy. You don't need somebody else to make you fulfilled. Because your fulfillment is in your relationship with him. And now when I become single, I, I increase my value. And what the enemy doesn't want you to do is to increase your value in God. He wants you just to stay unmarried, unhappy, unsatisfied, 
unfulfilled, always complaining, always pointing the finger, it's always somebody else, it's always either God's fault or somebody else's fault, but it's never you because you never took the time to work on yourself. And as uh, and going along with what Pastor is saying and what uh, Kenneth Copeland taught us on last week or reminded us of the Word of God in Genesis 1, Genesis 1, beginning at verse 26, and this is a part to help us to understand when God, before God even made man, before he, he brought Adam here on the earth, he had a plan for man. He had a plan for man and woman. Right. Before. So this is what he said. And God said, let us, being let, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, let us, not just, I'm going to go down and make man, but he said, let us, calling all three together, God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Yeah. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and you know, we kind of run past it, we kind of memorize it, and fish of the sea, the fowl of the air over cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. But that is so huge when God before, he said, I'm gonna make man and let's go down and let's, let's do a, a big thing. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, let's, let's, let's go down and make man. And then he says in verse 27, so God created man in his own image. See, you are somebody because you created in his own image. Say that again. In the image of God created he him, male and female, Right. created he them, verse 28. And then what did he do when he made them? And then it says, and God blessed them. Yeah. Blessed means fortunate, Fulfilled, prosperous, what is it? Content. Content. Prosperous, blessed. Prosperous, blessed. Yeah, yeah. And the, what I like one, Happy, about one fortunate. of them yeah, is to be envied. One of the definitions of blessed is to be, to be envied. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful. See, if you're single, you, you just got, you got so much to do. And I know many times when we hear that, be fruitful, we think that you're supposed to have some babies. You're supposed to have a bunch of babies. But no, be fruitful, you know. Anyway, that's, that's part of it, but that's not all he was telling you to be when he said be fruitful. Be single, be fulfilled in your singleness. Be fruitful and multiply. This is before man was even here. He was creating him and he had already blessed what he was already getting ready to do. He says, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth yeah. and subdue it and have dominion over all those different things. So, oh, and, and what I like about it, what you just brought out and what he, Brother Copeland brought out too, <laughs> is that to be fruitful, it, it means that our life should be meaningful. Yes, very People mean. should be able to uh, get from our life. Our life is so full, full, so meaningful that when they're around us, they get blessed by being around us. Amen. Right, but so, when we're not single, we start feeling like we're rejected or we feel like, you know, if you don't understand what singleness means, yeah. you, you feel like, you know, you've been left out or you've been pushed to the side and not understanding that you are made in his image and you are a tree that people want to need to be able to pick from because you've got so much a part of you. I'm going to give you a couple, some quotes real quickly. If you can write them down, if not, you can get the CD. But singleness first, then marriage. Singleness first, then marriage. Singleness is the foundation of all relationships. Singleness is the foundation for all relationships. Singleness first, then marriage. Singleness is more important than marriage. Singleness is more important than marriage. Right. Singleness is the prerequisite for marriage. Right. Singleness is the prerequisite for marriage. Yeah. Marriage is only as good as your singleness. Yes. Marriage is only as good as your singleness. Mm -hmm. Marriage exposes your singleness. Yes. Marriage exposes your singleness or the lack of it. Marriage exposes your singleness or the lack of it. Because how many married people do I have in here today? Raise your hands up, married folks. How many of y'all know it exposes where you are? When you get into relationship with somebody else, your lack of patience, your maturity, huh? your impatience, 
unforgiveness. It exposes so many different areas. If you have those typed out, leave them on the screen where they can write them down for me, please. So it exposes. So when an understanding that singleness means to be separate, unique, and whole. Singleness is God's original plan for mankind. Just because you have not heard it does not mean it. That the reason why so many people slip and slide in a relationship, the reason why so many people have so many problems in their grasping of God's power and presence in their life, the reason why a lot of them don't see God doing a lot of things that they want to is because of their lack of singleness. In other words, if I will get into God's original plan for my life and pursue singleness, no matter what age you are, you're never too late to pursue singleness. So I'm going to tell a little story. Since last week I didn't get to, we had Brother Copeland here, but I shared the story before. I was at a convention. I've been to thousands of them. I was at a convention, and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the host of the convention said, I want all the singles to stand up. So I stood up with all the other singles. And then people started laughing at me because they thought I was having a senior moment. <laughs> because I stood up as a single. And, uh, and then so they sent, they sent the ushers over to try to tell me, it's not for you, Pastor Gado, you're married, it's for the singles. I said, I, I am single, but I'm married. See, they didn't even understand that singleness comes before marriage. In other words, my marriage is only as good as my singleness. So when I stood up as a single, I'm married, but I'm a married single. Are you with me? And so they, they couldn't understand. They thought I was confused. But see, the problem is, is that most of the people out there in the church world are confused because they look at singleness as being a negative, but not being a positive, and that they didn't even understand that singleness is God's original plan for all relationship. Your relationship is only as good as your singleness. So you say, I can't seem to find a good man. Well, either you got the problem or you picking some unmarried people that have never come into singleness. Okay, all right. So look with me in your Bible to the book of Romans. Let me show you something. Romans, the sixth chapter. Romans, the sixth chapter. Romans, the sixth chapter. Well, Pastor told this story. Can I tell a story? You got a story too? Yeah, I got a story. About somebody who understands their singleness. Uh, this woman uh, uh, had a class reunion coming up, and she was going to bring her husband to the class reunion. <laughs> and um, and uh, her husband was now a, a Fortune 500. He was in a business, and he was doing very well in his business. And, and so, and she was going to her class reunion, and he knew a little bit about, a little about her past, and that she had some other uh, admirers or boyfriend, you know, in school. And so, basically, they get to the reunion, and they see um, the ex-boyfriend there. And so the husband, you know, he feels real good about himself. He says, oh, yeah, uh, I thought I heard you, you know, you used to talk to my wife, and, you know. So, by the way, uh, what, what do you do? And he says, uh, well, I, I, I've got a business, and basically, I, I work with gas stations. And he says, oh, is that what you do? Okay, all right. And so he goes back to his wife. He says, see, you had to marry him. You be wife of the gas station attendant. And she said, no, if I had married him, he would be the Fortune 500, and you would be the one who would make the gas station. make him who he was, and, and it wasn't about that, because she knew who she was. So is that the moral of the story? The moral of the story is know who you are, know who you are, and what you've done to contribute to because of your singleness. All right, thank you, Brenda. You're welcome. Look with me in uh, 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 Romans, the sixth chapter, in verse 19. It says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmities of your what? Yes. I'm going to read it again, Romans uh, 6, 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmities of your what? Yes. 
of your flesh. Now, let me make this statement real quickly. Look at me, everybody, real quickly. When you, how many are born again in here? Any born again people in here today? Okay. All you that have been born again, you move from, from being body, soul, and spirit to becoming spirit, soul, and body. I am a spirit being who lives in a body who has a soul. Are you with me? I am spirit, soul, and body. That's why the Bible says he that is led by the spirit are the sons of God. So our greatest quest now, that's why singleness is so important, is to learn how to be led by the spirit. The problem is that most Christians are still body, soul, and spirit, though they, they have been transformed spirit, soul, and body because of the infirmities of their flesh. They still let their flesh rule them. Their flesh control them. Have anger, temper, temper and tantrum. Un, don't, can't forgive. Uh, still been getting into sexual, uh, sexual relationships. Doing things that are unbecoming as a Christian. Because God says, he said, I would, I'm trying to speak to you, but I'm speaking to you as people that are still having the, the, uh, the infirmities of your flesh are still controlling you. Look at verse 19. He says, because of the infirmities of your flesh, uh, he says, for as ye have yielded your, what? Members, servants unto uncleanliness, unto, unto iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now, and you need to put brackets around some of that, but even so now, as a believer, even so now, yield your members, uh, servants unto what? Righteousness and holiness. Everybody say righteousness and holiness. Righteousness and holiness. So he said, now yield yourself to that. In other words, see, a lot of Christians are always saying, God, help me do this. And, and Jesus, help me do this. And Jesus, I need you to do this here. And Jesus has done everything he's going to do. Listen to me, you got to take your authority. You got to take your dominion. You got to take your rightful position and say, no, no, you're not going to run me like this. No, you're not going to act like this in my house. You're not going to treat me like this here. And you take your authority. Listen to me. So people want to blame you. Well, Jesus didn't answer my prayer. That's why I'm still loose as a goose or, or whatever the case is. Is because you, listen to me, you are where you are because you're not exercising who you are in Christ. See, so he says, look what he says here. So, in verse 19, and he says, uh, iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield yourselves as m your members, servants unto righteousness, yeah. and then unto holiness. Listen to me. Look at me real quick. Look at me. Unto righteousness. In other words, I can't even move into holiness, or in, I, in other words, I want to say holiness, into, into singleness, because singleness or holiness is about your character. So I can't even move into what God has for me. When, why? When I don't even know who I am. Right. See, it says, unto righteousness. See, you need to understand that through the blood of Jesus Christ, you have been made righteous. I'm not trying to be righteous. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I got a song I can sing that the angels can't even sing. I've been redeemed by the blood. I have been made a son of God. I am a son of God. I've been made in his image and his likeness. And God has declared me righteous. Therefore, I have no inferiority complex. I have no guilt, no condemnation. I have no sense of inferiority. I walk as the very son of almighty God before all of the angels of heaven, before all the angels in the earth and under the earth. I stand as the very son of almighty God. Though I, I am a son of God, therefore I exercise my authority as being righteous, made in his image and his likeness. I just want to testify I am somebody through the blood of Jesus Christ and I'm not going to be inferior to you when you don't know who you are and you want to put me down because I walk at a higher level than you do because you don't want to change 
You want to stay inferior where you can always make excuses for the appetites of your flesh. <coughs> but I choose to walk in my authority. I choose to walk in, in who I am in him. And now holiness is not a struggle for me. It's not a struggle for me because I, I, I walk in righteousness. And so I'm not trying to be something that God has not already made me to be. Mm -mm -mm. Walking, say, I'm not walking around with a sin conscious of what has happened in the past about all my stupid decisions I made in the past. Somebody raise your hand up and say, neither am I. Some of y'all are a little slow. Neither am I. No, I'm not walking in my path. No, I was stupid. I made wrong decisions. But now that I accepted Christ in my life, I'm not, listen to me, I'm not living in the past no more because the blood has washed my sins away. I am a son of God right now. And now, because I walk in that, I can't, the enemy is not going to put me down for my past mistakes, my past indiscretions. It's under the blood of the crucified one. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Glory to God. Amen. So we all raise our hands. We know that we're saved. We know that God has changed us and, and we're walking in the newness of life. But you know, when we were in the world, we gave the world 100%. Hey, we wanted, when we wanted to do it. Why don't you, you testify? Why don't you testify? You to do it when I, you was in the world, you, you gave like a hundred. But, but, uh, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I ain't talking about me. Right, right. Well, I was saved, I got saved too. I mean, I'm just saying, gave the world 100%. We wanted to go for the gusto. We wanted to do things right. Pastor used to talk about all the time how he didn't even go out to, to, to the club. Now, why are you going to talk know, about or, me? I'm talking about. So, uh, but, but he was just saying, but, but you, he gave his whole, his whole self. You know, he said he'd, he'd get mad when they closed the clubs down at 2 o'clock in the morning trying to find an after party after the, you know. I mean, so you, 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 you give your money, you give your time, you give your energy for what you wanted to do. Now that we come to Christ, we should be given 100%. Okay? We, we got the newness of life. We can't be picking and choosing what we're going to do and do things halfway where you can't get the full benefit of serving God and being righteous and holy because he said all the promises I have for you because these were the promises I gave you way back in the garden. I, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to replenish the earth. I want you to have everything that you need. So give God everything you yeah. have so that he can give you everything he has for you so that you can walk righteousness and holiness. All righteousness is is right standing with God. So, so, now, so now I'm not having a, 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 a religious experience. I'm, have, I'm in relationship. I, I'm experiencing the fullness of what God has for me and not just hearing about God. I'm experiencing God. And also, you know, I'm not just righteous because the right person hasn't come along for me to get with. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm righteous right now because ain't nobody came and knocked on my door. Well... I'm righteous right now because nobody's offering me no free stuff. Right. Or different things on that. No, I'm righteous because I have given my heart to the Lord. And no matter who comes and offers me something that's going to get me off, I am, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Whether they knock on my door or not, I'm going to tell them bye. No more. You can't come here who, no who, more. Who's knocking at your door? I ain't talking about my door. I ain't talking, I'm just saying, I, we don't, we're not just righteous. Well, it's convenient to be righteous. All right, all right. Well, there's no temptation. All we have right, made up our okay, mind. okay, Brenda. Verse, 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 verse 22, verse 22. But, but now being made free from sin. Yes. See, in other words, he's talking to the single. Now, those that are coming in, now being made free from the sin nature. In other words, the sin nature doesn't have authority over me no more like it used to be when I was body, soul, and spirit. Now that I'm spirit, soul, and body, the sin nature has no authority. It can't just make me do something. Exactly. Are you with me? Yes. It says, and because, of, and be, become, and it says now, and become. Mm -hmm. 
and become. In other words, see, you have to always be striving to become. See, your becoming is not already become. And so I, that's what we talk about being single is now I'm becoming. I'm working on me in that area. So be, and it says, and become servants of God. In other words, I don't automatically become a servant of God by my be, being spirit, soul, and body. Now that you have heard the word, I'm asking you to open the door to your heart and ask Jesus Christ to come in. So you do that now. And if you ask to invite him into your life, he says, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart and invite you into my life as my Lord and Savior. You do that. Christ is in your life. We're shouting with you, rejoicing with you. And so I'd just like for you to email us or write us or call, or you could uh, uh, get a hold of us through Twitter or Facebook at Philip Godot, at Philip Godot, Twitter or Facebook. Or Facebook, and I tell you what, we're going to respond back to you. We're excited with you. Looking forward to hearing more from you. Any prayer requests, also. Okay? Relationships that win, you'll learn how to work on you first if you want to improve your relationship with others. You know, isn't it something? Uh, when you drive a car, you got to go and take a test to get a car license, to get a motorcycle. You got to take a test to get a contracted license. But when you get a marriage license, you have to take no test. You just go and do it. And so it's, it's already almost basically doomed for failure before it gets started. So that's why I try to encourage people, let's take the test before, go to counseling, read books, learn each other, how we each other think, and see if there is a, a, a really a cohesiveness that you're willing to work together. Because when I ask men who want a healthy relationship, how many books have they read on it? And they can tell me about all their football stars or basketball or baseball or soccer. But when I say, now you can tell me all the statistics and names and all that kind of stuff, but you can't tell me that you have ever read or did applied yourself to have a strong, healthy relationship between your marriage. And see, marriages plateau, they, they die, they get stagnated because of the lack of information or continuing to put into it and that foundational man is the one that has to continually understand he's the giver he's the giver in it he's the one that is the projector to make it happen subscribe to us on youtube and see the latest videos from doctors philip and brenda godot it's easy i am the god of more than enough i am a hell shed i got i'll bring you back and then I'll lift you up. Just log on to YouTube and type in Philip Godot Ministries and then just click subscribe. The video messages are right there on your screen. And if you're out and about, we also have a smartphone app so you can catch the Godots on the go. The app is easy to find. Just search Calvary Christian Center for both Android and iPhone users. Stay informed, stay connected, and stay encouraged on YouTube and with our amazing app. It's easy to become a partner. Just log on to our website and you'll receive special video messages and updates. Thank you, partners.